for tapes, CDs, DVDs, to our publication, Voices from His Excellent Glory, Declaring the Kingdom, write P.O. Box 21516, Hot Springs, Arkansas, Zip 71903. Our website is www.lakehamiltonbiblecamp.com and lhbconline.com. There are hundreds of free audio files there. It's like going to Bible school at home. This is the 2017 Men's Conference being held at Lake Hamilton Bible Camp in Hot Springs National Park, Arkansas. Friday evening, October the 13th, 2017. Randy Ritchie is the speaker of this service, teaching on unforgiveness, unholy judgment, and dangerous vows. I want to say this to you. My name is Randy Ritchie, for those of you that don't know me. And I'm honored to serve here as a minister this weekend. Uh, this is a wonderful place to be. God shows up here, and He does His work every single time we come because He's a good, good Father, and He loves His people. Amen. So this young man, uh, 40 years old, that uh, worked for our son, swings a sledgehammer, and it falls, and it slips. Anybody ever swing a sledgehammer? They're kind of rebellious sometimes. And uh, this thing slipped off and hit him in the leg. And it gave him a compound fracture. And there were three men there that saw that. And even our son uh, thought his piece of rebar sticking out of his leg and went to pull it out and realized it was his bone. So my wife calls me and we pray. And just simply pray, Lord, I thank you for the miracle. We pray the power of that broken bone spirit that come to bring disaster and calamity. And we just pray and ask God. The, the young man, he's taken to the hospital. They won't even handle him in our town because it's more than what they can do. So they take him into Fort Smith. And in about an hour, he, there's a call comes in for, to go pick him up. And so my wife goes to pick him up. And when she gets there, he's standing out on the curb. And he said, all he did was call me up. Because the Lord reached out to the bone. It wasn't even broken. But they all saw the broken bone. I mean, of God, he's speaking loud. Another lady we know had stage 4 cancer. And the same thing. She went back. Christian doctor. There's no cancer. She goes, you sure it was cancer? I'm sure it was cancer. So our prayers have power. Yeah, you just know that. Amen? Yeah, exactly. Before we get started, I want to talk to you a little bit about our housekeeping. How many know every place has to have some rules? Yeah, huh? How many know in, in general our society is lacking some rules? Huh? I mean, what we have ain't nobody to obey. Huh? Right? And the rebellion kills. We want to be men under authority. How many, how many men in this room want to walk in the authority of the Lord? Amen. How many want to walk in power and see God do my thing? So, so we have to have some rules and have to have some authority. Not, not unruly control, but good godly authority. Amen? So we ask that lights be out and everyone in bed by 1030. Now if that's you on your room and it's a private thing, okay, just, just keep your noise down, okay? But let's not have the doors open and, and, and uh, have loud things going. Six o'clock comes early in the morning. Brother alluded to the 6 o'clock prayer time that we have here. And we strongly urge that you come to that prayer time. It's in the open here. You'll have a prayer team here that will minister to you as individuals. Okay? So, but come. And let me tell you something. Don't let sleepiness stop you from coming. I always say about a camp, I don't come here to sleep. I come here to do war. Amen? Amen. We come here to do war. How many want to, there's husbands in this room who want to be, a, be able to love your wife like Jesus loves the church. Huh? There's daddies in here that want to be strong daddies that, that raise their children up in the fear and admonition of the Lord. And you want to get those things out of you to stop that. Amen? There's, there's men in here that don't have wives and don't, don't have children, but you're still a leader. And you want to be everything that you can be for the living God. How many know that Jesus has done everything for us? Yeah. 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 Listen, I've come to learn that, listen, we, we don't like the circumstances that come from disobedience. They show a lot. Uh, you know, if you just let His love pour into you and you love Him, you want to obey. Yeah. 
And, and right now, I'm going to tell you right now, this is deliverance camp. The full counsel of God is taught here. I mean, crucify in your flesh. The full counsel. So, the suffering with Jesus to the blessing of God. There's a full counsel. We need to know it all. Okay? But if you come and you want to get deliverance, then you've got to behave in order to keep it. <laughs> and if you don't behave, you're going to get your butt with it. Promise you. James, in the book of James, I believe chapter 2, it says, Submit to God and resist the devil, and the devil will flee. Well, there's two parts to that. First of all, submit to God. That means be obedient. Obedient is your greatest base for spiritual warfare you're gonna, you have. If you don't have obedience, you, you ain't got that. you got to obey. you got purpose in your heart. I want to obey you, Lord. Help me to obey. How many know you can't do it alone? I have purpose in my heart to obey, Lord. Right? But I can't do it alone. That's, a, that's our position. Then you resist the devil. So if you obey God but don't resist the devil, he's going to kick your tail. But if you don't obey God and resist the devil, he's going to kick your tail. So how many like a butt whipping in this room? Not me. Okay. We're all in it. Everybody in agreement? Yeah. All right. All right. So we turn the lights out at 10.30, try to be quiet and aware that others will be sleeping may need to rest. And by the way, you're going to find out if you've never been here before, maybe you've been through some deliverance, maybe you haven't, but we are truly not wrestling with flesh and blood. But we're wrestling against principalities and powers and dominions and rulers of darkness in this world, evil spirits in high places. Man gets tired sometimes when he's doing that. He needs to sleep. So come on to make every session. It'll be one tonight, four tomorrow, one Sunday. You don't know when your breakthrough's coming. Make it at six o'clock. You don't know when your breakthrough's coming. And the, listen, I've been coming here since 2005. There are others, and there, there, there are people that come here, have been here for 20 years coming in here. And every one of us, and every man in this room is going to minister to you if something is revealed. He's ready to be ministered to sitting in the chairs out there while the other fellow's up here. Huh? How many know we're not done until the king comes? Huh? The minute you think you're through, hold on. <laughs> something coming. <laughs> Food and drinks are to be in the dining hall only. You've got something in your car, and you you want to uh, you want to drink uh, soda or something outside, then go ahead. But don't take it into your room because we're in the country here, and that, and the bugs will come in. Okay, so let's honor that in this room here. Water alone, bottled water. Okay. Hope you didn't bring any dogs or cats. <laughs> Be considerate of others when you take a shower. The next guy might like a little warm water. If you're a smoker, don't do it in the building or right at the exit. You're the, you're the guy that don't smoke a break. You just, just step outside with this and um, expose your cigarette butt. Um, we ask you to honor the authority so that the only ministry that goes on here is those that are in this pulpit and those that are on the prayer team. There might be, listen, it ain't about a who's got what. It's all glory to Jesus anyway. Amen? But it's about our order here. You may be a prophetic person. We'll save the word. Talk to the brother. You want to get his phone number, get it to him later, go ahead. But please don't do it this weekend. Okay? Don't pair up in prayer teams and do it. Listen, just let it be a break. If you're a minister... Maybe you're strong in the Lord. Maybe you came here and you're already casting out demons. But take this time to sit and lie. Sit and get other keys. Maybe there's something somebody's going to speak. Give you a key to help somebody else or yourself. Take this time. Some of you came here to get freedom. Some of you may come here to learn. But listen, you can't give but what you got. So get your freedom and get some more. <clears throat> then we can go out and do something. Amen? Alright? Uh, there'll be offerings. Um, take it up at times. Uh, please uh, do it in the offering. Don't hand any money to anybody that's a speaker. We don't want it. We want it in the offering bucket, okay? We are we are here representing Lake Hamilton by the camp. So, bless the camp. It's a worthy place to bless. I want to tell you there, uh, I probably have every one of those books in my library. Those books will benefit you. The Lord speak to you. We're not here hawking books, but they're there. And they will bless you. And if you want to learn, those books represent... So up here will be teachers. But those books represent teachers that have... And many of them have come before us. And been to this place. 
mighty men and women of God have, have been through this very pulpit and some of those books are, are theirs but there are, let the Holy Ghost speak to you and avail yourself if you want to and there are recordings of past um, past um, services too and both in DVD and in CD and I just want to welcome you we are so grateful that you're here it's so exciting to see all the new men it really is how many know we need some new warriors, huh? We need men rising up. How many knows we're in the last time? How many know that? Huh? Okay. I mean, it's readily apparent to anybody who reads the Bible. <laughs> readily apparent. There's folks down there that had hair canes lost their lives. Hope they were ready. Amen? Earthquakes, volcanoes, stuff happening all over the place. Jesus said earthquakes and dumb earthquakes. Said men will faint with fear of what's coming upon there. We're seeing stuff. So we got to gird up and get free and go to war. Amen? Amen? Thank you, Father. I'm going to give you a little deliverance one on one before we get started. If you've never been, so this isn't a matter of control, this is just a matter of um, experience. If you've been in this battle, if you want to get free, listen, I was a salesman for many years. And if, if I walked in a room and the dude was like this, it wasn't going to happen that time. <laughs> Without a little intercession. Oh, and I talked to the Lord and everything I ever done. Huh? Once I got saved, before that it was with the help of the devil. Like the but uh, but uh, listen, so you want to be open. So when we start ministry, so we, I'll teach tonight and when, when they get through... Uh, there, with the camera. He has to chase me something. Might want to get the microphone. All right. So, thank you. So when we when we get through teaching, at most points we'll, we'll take people through prayer. If we take them through prayer, we do group deliverance. Then be ready to be delivered. And the position you need to be in is this: if it's in me. And it does not look like Jesus. I don't want it in me. Okay? And the Lord's our deliverer. Now, some of you get great deliverance. We can believe God for great, great deliverance. But there's two people going to determine how much deliverance you get on this weekend. And first of all, it's Jesus. You got to take land and hold it. In, the, in Israel being an example for us, the, he said that what happened in the Old Testament was an example for us. And the Lord told Israel when they're entering into the promised land, by the way, which was full of giants, right? Mm -hmm. We're going to root some giants out this week. Mm -hmm. But when they were entering into their promised land, the Lord told them we're going to take it bit by bit, lest the wild beasts devour you. So if you've got every demon out of you and every stronghold broken at once, you might not be able to hang with it. Understand that. So the Lord will give you what He determines, but our job is to say, I want it as much as you have for me today. Amen? Because you've got to take land. This battle is for territory. We're made of dirt anyway, right? Mm -hmm. we're, we're a dirt body with a spirit in it. Thank you, Lord. Blowing your spirit in us. But the battle is for territory. If you got strongholds in your mind where lies have been, Okay? Strongholds. Those are lies. Come up from a little boy and you got rejected in the womb all the way to the first rejection, the second rejection, the tenth. Uh, maybe somebody assaulted you. All sorts of things come in and bring strongholds that bring lies that affect our behavior. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down strongholds. So when truth comes in and lies get, get, get destroyed, then we can get free. But listen to me. The foundation for deliverance is repentance. Amen. No repentance, no freedom. But we've got to give God permission. Listen, even, even as men, we build up walls. That, those have been our defense mechanisms. Okay? So, I mean, I'm going I'm to get up and start ministry. But listen, so when we, start, when we start praying and we start calling out demons, just be open. And what you are is open for the demons to leave and the Holy Spirit to come in. Amen? Amen. So, thank you, Paul. And then, if your best buddy beside you starts wailing and crying, 
Let God deal with it. Don't put your hand on him to comfort him. Just let God deal with it. If it requires some ministry, somebody will come. Okay? Just let it happen. Because sometimes, listen, we can be in the middle of all that and God's touching somebody and the minute you put the hand on him, then it takes it away from this to this. So I'm going to ask you men to pray with me. Word for word. And we'll open this ministry with prayer, okay? Say, Father, I come to you. In the name and blood of Jesus. I acknowledge you as the great Yahweh. The Ancient of Days. You're the Alpha and the Omega. And the God of Abraham. And Isaac. And Israel. Father, in the name of Jesus, I repent for my sins and the sins of my ancestors. Known and unknown. In Jesus' name. Asking for forgiveness. I receive forgiveness. And cleansing in Jesus' name. I apply the blood of Jesus to all that pertains to me. As your child, I've been given authority over all the power of the enemy. Whatever I find on earth is bound in heaven. I find the strong man a sign against me and everyone in this ministry. I bind mind blinding, heart binding, deaf dumb, and antichrist spirit in Jesus' name. I bind and break the power of all the spirits of witchcraft and territorial spirits sent to hinder this work in Jesus' name. I renounce the religious spirit along with unholy tradition, spirits of unforgiveness, bitterness, resentment, anger, hate, and spite, the root of bitterness and malice and any other hindering spirit in my life. I renounce Satan and now nullify and break all blood covenants, covenants, contracts, and agreements made with Satan, Lucifer, fallen angels, and demons by me and my ancestors knowingly or in ignorance in Jesus' name. I renounce all unholy baptism and dedication in Jesus' name. I break the power of the curses that through these agreements came and command all enforcing spirits to cease, desist, and flee in Jesus' name. I now break all ancestral, direct, self-inflicted, and indirect curses. In Jesus, name. In Jesus' name, I break the power, break the power of all satanic prayers, all satanic prayers. Seals, seals, and shields. Seals. In Jesus' name, In Jesus name. I, break the curses, I break the curses of negotiation, negotiation. and justification, justification of sin. In Jesus, In Jesus' name, I break and sever, break and sever all evil ties, all evil ties and ties with, the past ties with the past that are unholy. unholy. And I break all unholy ties with living and non-living individuals in Jesus' name. Jesus, you are my Lord, my Savior, and my Deliverer. Lord, Father, thank you for sending whatever holy warriors you deem needed for the battle at hand to clear the atmosphere and to aid in our deliverance. I believe your word that I can hear your voice. I believe you can show me things in visions and by the unction of the Holy 
Holy Spirit. By your grace. By your grace. I renounce rebellion. I renounce rebellion. Rebellion is witchcraft. And idolatry. And stubbornness. And I choose obedience. And I believe when the sun sets free. It is free indeed. Come, Holy Spirit. Have your way. In Jesus' name I pray and decree. In Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Now take a deep breath. That's how we get them out. Come out. Come out. Every spirit right now. In the name of Jesus. Every spirit right now. His legal rights have been broken. The Lord wants out right now. In the name of Jesus. You do it without hyperventilating. You take a deep breath. If you go to work, don't stop it. If you go to sneeze, don't stop it. If you go to cough, don't stop it. Just take one deep breath. One more deep breath. Let him go. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. All that from the covenant. In the name of Jesus. That from the blood covenant. In the name of Jesus. I break your power. In Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus. Not by might. And not by power, but by your spirit, Lord. Every unholy baptism, every unholy dedication, all those seals and shields. I strip right now all demonic armor in the name of Jesus. I break the power of any unteachable spirit and all rejection that would block the living God from having his way to die. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. All deliverance comes on the heels of repentance. This teaching will be called unforgiveness, unholy judgment, and dangerous vows. Let's say it again. Unforgiveness, unholy judgment, and dangerous vows. So, unforgiveness. Wounds can fester into infections if left untreated. That's exactly how unforgiveness works. Whatever was done to us pierced our skin. But if we keep prying it open and looking at the wound, it won't be able to heal. It's like you were cut. <clears throat> Instead, because it is continually exposed to dirty air, it becomes infected. The infection in the spiritual realm, realm is welcoming to unclean spirits, which fester the wound even more. If something isn't done, the person ends up facing demonic harassment and torture and becomes a very bitter and unhappy person. I may have lived that. You might be saying right now, you have no clue what they've done to me. They don't deserve anything at all, much less my forgiveness. They certainly don't deserve your forgiveness, much less God's. But none of us deserve what Jesus did. That's true. None of us. Those who killed Jesus didn't deserve anything at all. But look what he said just before he died. He said, Father, forgive them. For they know not what they did. I mean, glad that he said that for us too. Oh my Lord. Look at the deep and rich mercy and love that Jesus has towards us. None of us deserve it. He loves us for who we are, not because of what we've done. He wanted a relationship with us so much that he gave his life for it. When we grasp what Jesus has done for us, it makes it a lot easier to pass that grace on to us. I want to say this. As we begin to explore this, just know and be open. Because somebody might say, I've already forgiven everybody. But I've seen many a person say that in personal deliverance, hand them a sheet of papers and say, let's pray. Go into the room and come back in ten minutes and they got three pages full of people they need to forgive. So if we're praying and we're asking God, which we will here, and I'm even asking right now, let's just go there. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus, as we go through this teaching, I'm asking you to reveal to me any place where I have unforgiveness, unholy judgment, and open wounds. In Jesus' name. And if He begins to show you, if he's, even if you've already said, I forgive Him, if He's showing you, it ain't done. Need some healing. And some words need to be spoken. And some charges counsel canceled. We're not even saying what they did was okay. We're merely releasing our souls from the bondage and unforgiveness brings us under. You aren't forgiving them for their benefit, but for your own good. Your soul, not theirs, is what's being held in bondage because of the feelings you've allowed to harbor inside. You think, well, I don't go around 
thinking about them all the time. But no, when you have an encounter, you go, <gasps> something's wrong. It's not done yet. You need to be healed. You need to be set free. The reason I believe the Lord had me teach on this tonight is because His Word clearly says, if you don't forgive, you're not forgiven. That's right. In Matthew 18, we may read about it here, but there's a parable in there. And it's not good not to forgive. Because you actually are opposing the Lord. How many, how many want to oppose Him? How many know His Word says He gives grace to the humble and resists the proud? I don't want to be like God or anything. I won't be on the winning side. Amen. I'm going to eat it too. Yeah. So why do you do that? What they've done is to give you to bring you under bondage. Let it go. Let it poison out of your heart. Give it to the Lord and seek Him and He will lose that call. Forgiving others is very hard, but it's essential if you want to break out of the bondage that has brought you under. Forgiving others opens you up to the Lord and begin healing your soul. Which is your mind and your will and emotions. Since unforgiveness blocks us from receiving God's forgiveness of our sin, or as in Matthew 6.15, if you don't forgive, you're not forgiven. It puts a wall between us and the source of our healing. Matthew 18.27-34. Here's this parable. The Lord said to that ser- of that servant was moved with compassion and released him and forgave him his debt. This is the man that, in our terms, owed a million dollars. And he had 20. He wasn't going to pay it. And he asked for mercy. But the same servant, and he got it. He got it. But the same servant went out and found one of his fellow servants who owed him a hundred sorry, and he laid hands on him and took him by the throat, saying, Pray me what you owe. And his fellow servant fell down at his feet, and he begged him, saying, Have patience with me, and I'll pay you all. And he would not. But he went and cast him into prison until he should pay all the debt. So when his fellow servants saw what he had done, they were very sorry, and they came and told their Lord all that was done. And his Lord, after he called him, said unto him, You wicked servant, I forgave you all that debt because you begged me. Should you not also have pitied your fellow servants, even as I had pity on you? 1834, and here's some key words. And the Lord was angry and delivered him to the tormentors until he should pay all that was due him. Now here, so likewise shall my heavenly Father do also to you, unless each one of you from your hearts forgive his brother their trespasses. How many like tormentors? Listen, you belong to the Lord. You're his. If you have that finger out pointed, that's the character of the devil. What kind of witness is that? And so the Lord, those tormentors come. And all the goal is repentance. How many know the Lord doesn't even take pleasure in the death of the wicked? He doesn't want you tormented. He wants you whole and reflecting Him. But if you don't, tormentors are going to come. Arthritis, cancer, can't sleep at night, bitter. Just go down the list. And that includes, men of God, forgiving yourself. Because as a man thinketh, so he is. So if you won't forgive yourself, listen, many, many diseases where the body attacks itself are rooted in self-hatred. Because the body gets in agreement with the mind, even if it's subconscious. According to the Word of God, when we refuse to forgive, we're delivered under the Listen, I want to say this. I won't even pray. Listen, if, I, if somebody needs prayer for healing, lost people are different. God will heal some of them, just show them he's God so they can get saved. He's God, he can do that. But if you're born again, you have come into covenant with the living God, and you see you've got to forgive. And so I'm going to, I test everybody I pray for healing in the health, in the body, in the physical body. First thing I'm going to ask them is you got anybody you need to forgive? And if they say they do and they won't forgive, I'm not praying for that. Because God said. You get that? It's his word. He's a good, good father and he loves you. But he can't leave that destructive, unholy character in his children. How many know if 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 we weren't here for a purpose, we get born again, we go zoop and be gone. We're here for a purpose. And here's what I know too. So you can pray for them. 
And if for whatever miracle they got, well, if they got that bitterness in them, it's coming back. But they don't have their ground is not right. People need to get rid of stuff. He's a good father. The Lord is a mighty king, and he loves his people. He wants to deliver us from that bitterness so that we can truly reflect Him on the earth. So, here's the definition of torment. Extreme physical or mental pain. Something that causes extreme physical or mental pain. Infliction of torture. (coughs) Extreme pain or anguish of body or mind. Agony. A source of vexation or pain. Being vexed. Somebody does something to you. And you don't fully release it. A vexation comes. I've seen people that were healthy get high blood pressure because they were vexed by something working against them. And that person working against them was not living holy and doing right. But because they weren't fully turned over to the Lord and forgiven and blessed, and, and immediately in it, it got them. And once the fullness of repentance came, guess what happened? The blood pressure went away. Well, this is a bonus for somebody. High blood pressure is caused by either... It can be. You need to eat right. But a whole lot of it is caused by anger and fear. Hmm. You've got pressure coming in here on the outside. It reflects on the inside. If you had a, a, a teapot, okay, that pressure builds up. And then it starts talking. Well, that's what's happening in your body. Many people just need to forgive and release and then start fighting fear, as Brother said. Deliver us from fear. Because fear of what's happening tomorrow, fear of being rejected, fear of being abandoned, fear of man, all sorts of fear. If you've got dread working, you know dread? Dread means you got some problem with a brother or some problem with it, and you don't want to address it. So you sit around and you, you dread it and you dread it and you dread it, and oftentimes you just talk about it, boom, it go away. That's what I call a bonus. <laughs> According to the Word of God, those who don't forgive are turned over to those that bring pain, both physical and mental, often to the point of anguish and agony. It pays to repent and forgive. Healing and freedom never come without repentance. We have to be accountable for our own sin. We have to admit it and get rid of it. This is compassion, people. I know I'm... Listen... I lived a lot of drugs and alcohol until I was 40 years old. I know the life of destruction and fighting and divorce and all that mess. I know the life. We've got a wonderful deliverer. And I ain't looking back. But I'm going I'm to speak this to you. And as we, we move on in this teaching, so God comes and He does great and mighty things and He delivers you from drugs, and alcohol, sexual sin, perversion, okay? All those things may they fall off the wayside. Thank you for that one. Right? Now, so what's the devil going to work with? He's going to try to offend you. And you're going to sin with your mouth on what you speak about people you're judging. And if you were heavily into drugs and alcohol and sexual sin, if you get in that offense... Doors open. For the enemy to bring his bodies back. Offense kills. Just listen. It kills. This is nothing less than a strong literal warning that a person can fall into the hands of demonic spirits for torment and harassment if they're unforgiving and bitter inside. Unforgiveness often leads to bitterness with the tormentors bringing arthritis and many other physical maladies. Here in Acts 8.23... For I perceive thou art in the gall, poison of bitterness, and in the bond of iniquity. That's Jesus talking to a sorcerer, by the way. He said, Unforgiveness not only gives the enemy the right or ability to torment us, but it also prevents God from forgiving our own sins. That's serious. This means when we cry out for God's help, but we have unforgiveness in our heart, He looks and our sins are before Him. It puts a wall in our relationship. Between us and the Heavenly Father. You know, the Lord never abandons you or forsakes you. You know what it looks like with two men in a boat rowing together? You've got an oar on both sides, and they're rowing in the same direction. It works pretty good. 
But he takes one of them out of the boat. And that other one left in there spinning in circles. Hmm? So God never forsake your abandoning you, but he's saying, son, repent. I want to get in the boat. So we can row together. That old ship. What good is it doing me to hold on to the hurt and bitterness that the enemy has tried to plant within me? The reason Satan wants you to hold on to that bitterness is because it's poison to your soul. He comes but to steal, to kill, and destroy. John 10.10. 10. You know, he might forget, unforgiveness feel good. <laughs> you know, I got it right. Do you know what he did? Don't hold on. Don't let him do it to you. Stop it dead in its tracks. Release yourself from those hurt feelings and let them go. Stop holding on to them. Let the poison out of your soul. Yeah, because they don't care. They move on. They are moved on. They don't care. They moved on. They release it and let it go. Let it go. They don't care. They know. Right. Sometimes hurts and wounds have come and they don't even have two day hurt you. Some of those people would have never hurt you. Yeah. They would have never hurt you. Job breaking and rejection. There's a there's a chart on the wall. Everybody needs to glance at that. And that, I think they sell them, the posters still. You see, y'all still have posters? And if they don't, if they do, buy the poster. But that they, that will tell you a story. The root of rejection brings fear and rebellion and all that nasty fruit. So now we're going to talk about unholy judgments and, and its partners, fault finder. Accuser of the brethren and the spirit of religion. Here's what the Lord began to show me. So we're to deal with unforgiveness first. But oftentimes people have said, I forgive them, Lord. But that original judgment, see, if you were to commit a crime and you went before the courts, they're going to charge you first. Then when they find guilty, they're going to sentence you. So oftentimes we're releasing the sentence, but we're still holding the charge. We need to break those unholy judgments, which were the beginning. And there's a spirit called unholy judgment. Spirit of unholy judgment, spirit of unforgiveness, spirit of bitterness, spirit of gall, go on down the line. And by the way, the way the spirit realm works is that you don't just have one spirit of unforgiveness. Every time if that door is open and never delivered, you can have fifty. You can have fifty. You can have fifty spirits of rejection. Every time you got rejected, another layer. I want to say this to you. When you get born again, you make a shotgun prayer of some sort that goes, Oh, Jesus, I'm a mess. I'm a sinner. Father, forgive me. I need you, Lord. I believe you died for me and rose again on the third day. And you invite the Lord in to live. You make Him Lord. If you don't make Him Lord, He ain't your Savior. Because He's both. Has to be both. One and the same. More than the same. But you've invited him in and you've admitted you're a mess and you need his saving grace. Amen. And that's a shotgun. Here I am, I stand. But you want to get free? Then it's finding rifle shots. Rifle shots. Okay? First John one nine, confess your faults to Jesus. He's just, faithful, to forgive you and cleanse you of all righteousness. That's to the church. That's not to the lost people. It's to the church. James 5.16 says, Confess your faults one to another, and you shall be healed. So we have been given, listen, this glorious benefit called repentance. <laughs> Only people on the face of the earth that can take the soap out and use it. Everybody else just has to walk in their sin. But when you're born again, now the blood of Jesus, is, it cleanses us. But it takes confession in order to do that. Not to heaven or hell. You're born again, you're going to heaven. If you're born again, you're truly converted. You're born again. Now you can walk away. You volunteer in. I believe you can volunteer out. Alright? But He loves people. He's not looking to blot you out of the book. But you got to be real. Here I am, Lord. I, I don't want to look like the world anymore. Here I am. And come into covenant relationship. And we're all in varying levels of sanctification. I always tell people, listen, I saw I used to be a whoremonger, and I used to be a drug user, and I used to be an angry man, and I used there's all these things that I used to do that I don't do anymore. It's his glory, not mine. 
And there are good things that I would never do in my selfishness. Because it was all about me. But, but now, because of Him and His Spirit within me, I care about people, so I serve them. Right. And it's to His glory. But we're that work in progress. But we got we need to be in progress. Not in a place where we're just saying, that's the way I am. The way my daddy was, my granddaddy was. That's just what... No! Let's stop that. We're new creatures in Christ Jesus. We want to reflect His glory. Luke 6.37 Judge not, and you shall not be judged. Condemn not, and you shall not be condemned. Forgive, and you shall be forgiven. The Lord always establishes the principle of His Word by two or three Scriptures, which are witnesses to His truth. Matthew 5, nine. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. So the opposite of blessed is cursed. Who wants to be blessed? Who wants to be cursed? I'm sorry. Thank you, Lord. Cursed are the troublemakers because they are displaying the character of Satan. Blessed is better. Blessed is life. Cursed is death. Matthew 5.44 says, Blessed are you love your enemies. Bless them that curse you. Do good to them that hate you. And pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you. In this way, 545, you show that you are children of your Father in heaven. How many know the world doesn't do that? Only us. In Him. I always tell people come to me and say, I'm having trouble with my boss. Well, if they're God's kid, I say, Well, are you praying for them? Because if you're not praying for them, well, you call it, you got the problem's yours. <laughs> Start praying. Find the enemy. Repent for any rebellion in your own heart. Find the enemy. Pray for the people. <clears throat> Ask God to bless them. Pretty soon you probably get promoted. Glory Amen? We do it God's way. John 7, 24. Judge not according to appearance, but judge righteous judgment. So what is righteous judgment? And what is unholy judgment? We're absolutely called to judge right from wrong. Absolutely. If we don't, this world goes proverbially to hell in a handbag. If we don't say what's right and what's wrong. And God's Word says what's right. No question about it. One of the biggest traps of the enemy is the one in which most of the church is falling into. And I'm going to say, I'm going to clarify that by saying most of the church in America. In other places, it's not this way necessarily. This trap says anytime someone points out something's wrong, they're judging wrongly. We absolutely, as a church, are to speak truth in love in each other's lives. Often we are more concerned about how someone thinks of us than the fact their lifestyle is going to destroy them. We leave them to be destroyed by the works of their flesh as inspired by the devil rather than bringing truth. If you had a rattlesnake, I always look, I tell you, if you had a rattlesnake in your pocket and I walked by and didn't tell you, would you consider me friendly? <laughs> I've never had anybody say yes. Now, I don't judge people as if I couldn't do what they've done. I've done everything they could do. And every one of us is capable of doing anything any other man can do. But by the grace of God. By who you were born. Listen. Listen. Somebody hurt you. Somebody did something. You're looking at somebody. Listen to me. There is right and wrong. And there's wicked and there's right. But you do need to understand that if you were born with their parents, raised by their parents, with their ancestors, you'd be them and you'd do exactly what they did. Only by the grace of God. But we do say right or wrong. I remember a young man came up a prayer line one time. He's there with a, him, and a, him and, and, and a woman. And and they were asking me to pray for, for the, you know, she was having a custody battle over a child or something like that. And I looked at him and I said, are y'all married? No. Are you living together? Yeah. I said, well, I pray for you, but it's not going to do any good. What? See, you're living in a curse. I, listen, I, I love you. God loves you. And, and I believe God for you. But, but the condition you're living in, your doors are wide open for the devil to kill, steal, and destroy everything you have. And God, who would bless you, can't bless you because you're operating in that open sin and rebellion. 
And it turns out her husband was a uh, ex husband was an abuser. They were a few weeks away from um, uh, about a month away from the divorce, so they could get married. And I said, "Can you go live somewhere else till this happens?" He goes, "Well, there's no place for us to go." And I said, "Well, then you need to quit having sex." Man, the dude's eyes got about this. <laughs> Look at me. And that's what I told him about the rattlesnake. I said, if you had that in your pocket, what would you do? Would you want me to tell you? And listen, they came apart, did what they were supposed to do. They got married. I prayed for them. They made that commitment to me. Okay? I can't police their commitment, but I felt the witness of the Lord that they made the commitment. They pulled apart. They got married. She got her children. He got a new job. Everything changed. But if I had just gone and prayed for him, nothing would have happened then. Unless somebody else came along and would have told him. If I got a rattlesnake in my pocket, I want to be told. <laughs> Amen? I want to be told. Galatians 6, 1 through 3. Galatians 6, 1 begins. Brothers, if a man is overtaken in a fall, you, the spiritual ones, restore such one the spirit of meekness, considering yourself, lest you also be tempted. Bear one another's burdens so you will fulfill the law of Christ. For if anyone thinks himself to be something being nothing, he deceives himself. But see, we still have to judge right and wrong. How can we restore anybody if we don't see what's wrong? It's all about your attitude. Are you doing that? Pointing the finger of condemnation? Or are you offering life? The key is humility. Only by God's grace are we not in the same trap. Now listen, so we're, we don't get credit. Listen, all the good stuff, He gets the credit for. And when you blow it, you run to Jesus. Help me, Lord. And He gets the credit for that. Look at Jesus with the woman caught in adultery. He forgave her, but He warned her, go and sin no more. If you judge another human being as if you would not do what they're doing if you were in their shoes, raised by their parents, with their ancestors, you have entered, listen to me, entered into unholy judgment. I just did a ministry this past week, and in the middle of it, I said, some of you need to forgive those TV preachers. And the whole place almost came. God's going to deal with those guys. Should I, should I be praying that they get some life? And some understanding. And that if they're in error some way, that they come into truth so that the body is strengthened? Or should I condemn them and agree with the devil? Just saying. The realm of self-righteousness is the realm of the Pharisee. Our righteousness is only from Jesus and not of ourselves. We would do exactly what that person did. When we really see how much damage the enemy has done to people, we want to see that change. Matthew 7, 2. Otherwise, you will be judged by the same standard you use to judge others. The standards you use for others will be applied to you. An aspect of this is whatever you judge a person for, you end up doing. I, I remember when I was taught this. And I, and, I, and I got the lesson, and then about a week or two later, there was a fellow that was gossiping, and I began to tell somebody else about his gossiping and realized I was gossiping. <laughs> that was a light lesson. What if, what if I judged him if he fell into sexual sin? Okay. It's like, as our friend Carl Butaw, who ministers here, it's like you place a purchase order for it to come to your house. And if you don't do it, maybe your children do. That same minister years ago, I remember him in that teaching, he said he remembered this woman. They came along, and some other woman had children that had a child that went off into drug use. And this other woman came and said, Well, my child would never do that. Mm. Two months later. If you hate others because of your unholy judgment, you also hate yourself. A person who's full of unholy judgment becomes a fault finder. Let's take a look at this aspect. Here's the definition of a fault finder. One given to fault finding. A person who criticizes someone or something often in a way that is not fair or reasonable. Or a person who tends to find fault. If you've got the gift of discerning of spirits, which everyone needs and everyone ought to pray for, but the devil has a counterfeit and it's judgment and criticism. And, it's, and even if you have that gift, it's from God. You, you need to use that to become an intercessor. 
when you see something's wrong, are you fighting or condemning? Jesus said he didn't come to condemn the world, but to save it. So am I going to take what I see and what I know and do battle for people? Or am I going to condemn them and agree with the devil and empower him to do more of what he's already been doing? So here's some synonyms or related words. Now I'm just going to ask you. I want you to close your eyes, please, and listen to these words and, and see if this applies to you in any way. Are you a castigator? Are you a censurer? Are you a criticizer? A disparager? A hypercritic? A nitpicker? A condemner? A denouncer? A belittler? A decrier? A derider? A detractor? An assailant? An attacker? A crucifier? A hair splitter? A quibbler? A haranger? A railer? A ranter? A rebuker? A reproacher? A reprover, an upbraider, a bellyacher, a complainer, a fusser, a griper, grouch, grumbler, or a whiner. Do any of those apply? If they do, say with me, Lord, in the name of Jesus, I ask you to forgive me and my ancestors for any of that. In Jesus' name. Galatians 5, 20 and 21, we see the root and fruit in the flesh of unholy judgment. So, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, and envyings. Every one of those is wrapped in unholy judgment. Guard against giving place to a false shining spirit. Not only is it a work of the flesh, listen, it can also give place to a demonic spirit, uh, spirit that specializes in inspiring people to find fault. With every person and everything they encounter. You know, men, there's people under bridges that have a fault-finding religious spirit. And they can teach you, they can quote the Bible to you up one time down there. People in jail, same way. But nobody can teach them. Nobody. Because they're going to find fault in that teacher. I had a little bit of a, some, uh, a revelation one day that uh, an unteachable spirit will always... And rebellion will always find fault in godly authority. Always. It'll always look for them. How many know there ain't nobody perfect? So who's going to teach you that? Where are you going to find a teacher? Because there won't be any if you're looking for flawless men. But we got men who belong to a flawless Savior. This is the end of part A. Please play part B. Thank you. Our website is www.lakehamiltonbiblecamp.com and lhbconline.com. There are many hundreds of free audio files there. It's like going to Bible school at home.